Well, folks, today we're going to give you the latest Nintendo Switch 2 rumors and leaks, including information on the battery and how long we can expect the battery to last. Stuff we haven't really talked much about. We talked about potential specs in the in the past, the T239 chip. We've obviously talked about a lot of rumors and stuff, how to Tokyo Game Show or Gamescom. But today we're going to be going over some new stuff that I haven't covered yet and why we're covering it. And then obviously just going over and making some corrections on things from last week. And yeah, you know what? It's going to be a pretty good video. So why don't you go ahead and drop a like if you're enjoying it. Subscribe to the channel. We're on a road to 150,000 subscribers. And go ahead and smash that bell icon to be notified of all future uploads. All right, so here's the first thing we got to in, get into. We're going to be talking about Nash Weedle just for a brief moment. Nash Weedle was potentially correct on Metroid Dread stuff in the past and a few other things over the years. Nothing big. He hasn't really had his name out there attached to a ton of rumors, but he does have some stuff out there in regards to Tokyo Game Show, and we're not going to revisit that stuff because so far there's nothing to really you know, update about that. It's either true or it's not. And yes, these are rumors, of course, because we can't verify any of this information. But he did say that the pieces are falling into place for the Nintendo Switch 2. Now, normally, we wouldn't really care that he said that. But somebody said in response, he asked if Nintendo would release patches for Nintendo Switch 2 for Switch games that would focus on upping the resolution, maybe even more than the frame rate. Nash Weedle simply responded with, yes. Obviously, this is all unverifiable and a rumor, but that does do two things, at least in terms of it being a rumor. It's a statement that Switch 2 will be backwards compatible and that Nintendo will patch games to run better on Switch 2 from the Nintendo Switch era. Very, very interesting and something I know many people have had questions on. Now, again, this isn't a fact. It's a rumor. Make sure that you're treating it as such. And he doesn't clarify if these patches are paid for or free or if they're just going to be there day one. We don't really know. We don't know if this applies to all games, just Nintendo games. Again, there wasn't anything expounded on this. Just a simple yes. Now, now we get to the fun stuff about the battery life. Oh, man, this is pretty cool. So there's this user over on Fami Boards called Old Puck. I have no idea who he is. I've had a little bit of conversations with him, but I don't know what his background is, game development, uh, hardware, software. I, I have no clue, but he seems to be really, really knowledgeable on everything going on when it comes to the technical aspects of the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch 2. And again, I don't know how this guy is connected. I just know that he's been right on a lot of stuff in the past, and all of that is based on things that he claims to have direct knowledge of. Now, this user over on Family Board said, uh, that's called Look Over There. He said, we have performance impressions from Gamescom. We have a rough idea of battery life. If you don't remember this particular detail that was mentioned already in this thread, don't ask me. It's not my place to answer. He was responding to somebody else. Well, the person who made the original comments on battery life was actually Old Puck. He responded and said, I'm not sure if you're referring to me, but I will repeat it anyway. I was told, so again, he's claiming he was told by people, that early briefings to partners said the target was three to six hours of battery life. So, better than the version 1 Nintendo Switch, but not quite at the version 2 levels. You can maybe look at it as a bit of a Switch Lite in terms of battery life, which, to me, that is perfectly acceptable. Again, call this a rumor. I can't verify this stuff. But if that is the case, that seems to me perfectly acceptable, three to six hours, Obviously, it depends on what you're playing. You're playing lighter indie games. You'll probably get more like six hours. You're playing something like the new 3D Mario game or a Tears of the Kingdom or something. You're probably more on the three-hour side. But to me, that's perfectly reasonable, especially when you consider how powerful this system is. Supposedly, if the rumors are all true, it's more powerful than a Steam Deck, and the Steam Deck can't even get three to six hours. So I'm just saying that I'm perfectly happy if... That is the case, but again, it's going to come with the caveat of how powerful really is this next generation system? Is it as powerful as we think? I don't know. A lot to ponder on, essentially. Now, beyond all of that, this is now another thing that we're getting from Family Boards, but I don't know that we're going to get this information at Family Boards because it's coming from Nate the Hate. And all he did was tease that he plans to release some new information on Switch 2. So, information people aren't talking about currently somewhat soonish. He's just double-checking on what he can share, 
with his sources and obviously making sure it's presented in a way that won't create confusion or get people taking it wrong. Again, I don't know if this means he's going to be talking about what the gimmick's going to be on the system because that could be something people might take in the wrong way or what games or backwards compatibility. Again, I don't really know what he knows. He knows what he knows, and I suspect he'll probably share this through his Nate the Hate podcast. That tends to be where he shares all of his new information, sometimes just commenting on it on places like Family Boards or Reset Era, but really, you know, he shares the brux of it now on his own podcast. And... To be fair to him, it has helped boost his podcast to uh, pretty good viewership every single time. Well, most times anyways, especially when Nintendo Switch 2 is involved. Now, right now, that's the new stuff that's sort of floating out there. The quote-unquote new again. This is rumors. I can't verify this stuff. But we do have some updates on old things we have covered. So several people who have been reliable in the past, like Necro Felipe Lima, Nate the Hate, Old Puck, people that we talk about frequently on this channel, have pointed out that NG is not a code name used by anyone at Nintendo slash NVIDIA. Now, again, this is what they're saying. I can't verify this. So it's making the Soldier Delta rumors we posted on Friday have a little bit more doubt, because you remember that was one of the things his source said, is that it's the code name Nintendo was telling developers to use. Apparently, that is not the case. And this is in addition to the fact that the two reported release dates land on a Tuesday and a Sunday. Now, that both sounds weird. Technically, Nintendo has launched systems on a Tuesday. It, they don't do it often, but they have done it. But they obviously won't launch it on a Sunday. So that already just threw some red flags up. Now, again, they're not refuting the fact that there could be two systems, that one might be all digital. They're not refuting price points because they maybe don't have enough information to refute that stuff or they just are outright dismissing it because of the other things. I have no idea. I just like to provide updates so you guys kind of know. And again, that was a rumor in the first place. Rumors are meant to have skepticism. Now, one thing I do want to just talk about here at the end is I want to provide an update to how I'm going to be uh, covering things in the future. And when I say covering things, I'm more so talking about my titles and thumbnails uh, when it comes to leaks and rumors. Look, uh, leaks and rumors are technically not the same thing. In fact, there's a massive difference between the two. Rumors are unverifiable and leaks are verifiable. There are like a massive difference. Like when someone data mines, you can just go data mine that same file yourself and verify the information. That's a verifiable leak. Uh, but when somebody just posts that, hey, I have heard this or Switch 2 will have this according to my sources, that's always a rumor. It doesn't matter if it's Video Game Chronicle. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, the, the Wall Street Journal or Nate the Hate on his podcast or Jeff Grubb or, you know, Nash Weedle or anybody else. We can't verify any of it. So it makes all of it a rumor to us. So here is how we're going to handle things, and there's going to be three different ways we would we do it so you know how to know what you're looking at. If it's an actual leak, verifiable information, like technically there was a leak from NVIDIA last year that they verified themselves, and that's where we got the MVN2 and the T239. So that is an actual leak, okay? So we would label things that happen like that as a leak. And we will link to all of our sources like we always do, even though YouTube is now starting to ding videos for linking to sources. Apparently it's spam now. I don't know. It's whatever. We're going to keep doing it until they start to give us strikes. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I, I don't want to get into it. We'll talk about it on a live stream sometime. And then we're also going to change um, what we do with other things that we've been calling leaks. Like when we get things off of... Uh, 4chan or Twitter or a forum, all that stuff's going to be properly labeled now as rumors moving forward. Uh, I know that leaks get more attention. I know that leaks, you know, hit better in the YouTube algorithm. And I know that in my videos, I always clarify that it's rumors. But, you know, there is something to be said about um, not misleading people. And clickbait is a, a big thing on YouTube. And I understand. But I, I do think that it is important that people set their expectations going into a video. And uh, so we're, we're going to play around with that and see if we can still get similar attention, but, but actually just label things properly there. Now, one thing we're going to keep doing, and we've been doing this for a while, is anytime it comes from a reputable website, so Video Game Chronicle, Wall Street Journal, we're still going to call those reports. Now, reports aren't facts. Reports are a reputable outlet has said something's happening but we still can't verify it. So it's technically still a rumor. If you look up the word report, it, it's just it's just reporting what somebody has said. It's not necessarily meaning that you should believe what somebody should say. So I'm just going to 
leave that as it is. And I think you guys are mostly fine with that stuff. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're covering the stuff that isn't at these more reputable websites coming from people like Nate, the hate that who even knows if his name is Nate. I have no idea. Uh, Nash Weedle, who the hell is he? I don't know. Some random person on Twitter from Spain. Again, those kind of people need to be listed as rumors. Everything else that's verifiable is leaks. And then stuff from big name websites will be labeled as reports, assuming that they are the actual source on it and not, you know, reporting on, Something from somewhere else, like a Nate the Hate thing. And then we're like, okay, well, yeah, that's obviously a rumor. Anyways, you guys let me know what you think about this stuff down in the comments below, both on the new stuff we added today and on some of the changes we're doing at the channel. Obviously, this video has leak and rumor listed in it because I wanted people to tune in so they could see that, you know, we're going to be making a, a call and a, a stance and a difference in the future. I'm all about making my content better, but I also want to bring accurate and fun conversations to all of you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.